so now I'm, I'm going to start with <clears throat> my my pattern my pattern work and again when you when you look at this leg you can see all the different directions that her hair is going um, it, some of it's going this way, some of it's going that way, so she's got a lot of swirls and cowlicks on her leg also. So the same thing is with the side of her face. When I do this area, I have to kind of go in a lot of different directions. Um, now, what I usually do when, I, when I'm setting the lines on the, on the back leg, her hawk bone is right here. So I go a little bit above the hawk, and what I do, instead of setting a straight line, I'm going to set it more at an angle like this, and that's going to give her the look that she's got um, better angulation in her in her rear leg, because it'll actually make this look a little higher. And with the <coughs> slant, it kind of gives that nice um, angulated look that we're going for. Especially when the dog's moving, this makes a huge difference. So many people, when they're setting the pattern in, they set the pattern too low, and then you don't have enough um, hair on your palms to work with, and then the palms wound up looking really circular instead of more of an oval shape that we're trying to go for and it just throws off the balance of the whole dog because you have to think if you have a a really large dog like this and you have these little bitty pom-poms or rosettes on the bottom um, you know it just it just throws off the whole balance of the dog now this this area right here is actually a little bit tricky because she's got these the the, the bone and this the, um, tendon here so and, and you can see the the skin here on the inside. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so what I usually do is I use the fingers on this side and I kind of push that out to level it off a little bit in order to get that line nice and straight. So you kind of use your fingers on the inside and, and also to, you know, to be able to get the hair that kind of sits inside that little, that little spot right there. And again, on, on my clipper work, I want to try to get everything as neat and clean as possible. And then I'm just going to work my way up her leg. What blade are you using? Um, I still have this on a 40. And she's got, she's got nice dark skin, so this, this isn't any problem for her. And, and I go with a very light touch. You don't need to dig in. Um, now you can see I've got to go in this direction in order to get the cowlicks. Zip. Now the hair swirls back this way. I see a lot of people in the ring that don't take the time to, you know, really clip them properly and they leave all these little patchy things and it, I think it really does make a big difference in the overall look of the dog. Ultimately, what the judge is supposed to be looking for is correct confirmation, movement, coat type. So your grooming is not supposed to be like the main focus on the dog, but when you walk in the room in the ring with a, a dog that's really stunning to look at, it's it's hard for them to not not see you, you know, to, to not take their eyes off of your work. And I think with us being groomers, we're really more into detail on the the whole profile of the dog than you know a lot of people in the show ring are, um, just because that's what we do for a living. So we, we're real particular with the detail of you know how clean our clipper lines are, how how smooth our clipper work is, how nice the scissor work is, and how everything um, how we bring everything together in the end. You know, as far as that that final picture that you're looking at. I don't always win, but I've had people come to me and say, you have the nicest groomed dog out there. Thank you. <laughs> it's my consolation prize. <clears throat> the same thing with the, the inside of her leg. I have to do the same thing. I want this line to match going all the way around. So I'm going to use my fingers and press on that, that skin to get it to come out and make that nice straight line. Um, 
when I when I place the line on my tail set, um, one thing that you that you want to do, if you have a tail that's really long, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to clip up further on your on your tail the, the tail the line on your tail, um, because that that ends up making it look like a long handle. What I usually use as a guideline, if you were to if you were to draw a line at the very bottom of her rectum and bring the tail down, that's where I want to set my line. So basically.